So this may be the most requested video I've ever had. And uh, I've had so many people ask it, in fact, and I've typed it so many times in comments, I thought, now's really a great time to make this video. And what we're gonna talk about is how to harvest, store, and use ginger in different ways. Now there's unbelievable number of ways you can use this stuff. And these are just some of my favorites. And I would love for you to comment below and tell me what it is that you do that I don't or why you do it different. But in the meantime, I'm going to show you some ways to take care of this stuff when you get the big harvest out of your garden to how to use it, how to store it, how to prepare it for other things. And I think it's time that we go harvest a little knowledge. All right, let's go. Okay, so this is a slightly different way that I filmed this video. I've never done this before, so I apologize if it's a little choppy or a little strange. But basically, it took a lot of time to film all these different little things and parts and pieces, and then to put them all together. And I couldn't figure any good way to do this. So I apologize in advance if things feel a little choppy, but hopefully this turns out good for us. So there's lots and lots and lots of ways to uh, use ginger and store ginger, harvest ginger. So we're gonna talk about that right now. Now, if you haven't seen my other ginger video, go ahead and check that out in the links up above. But right now, let's just talk about the basics, which is harvesting ginger. Now, it comes in the fall and the leaves start to die back, or if you're like me, the leaves haven't died back, but we're gonna get a freeze and it's time to take it all out, which tends to happen almost every year now. So I'm gonna show you how to harvest it up. So to dig it up, all you really need to do is you need to take a pitchfork of some kind or a spade or a shovel, place it around the outside edges of the plant and make sure to clear things away too. get the leaves out of the way any mulch you have there place the shovel or spade fork whatever you want I have a fork in this case gently dig down and rock back and forth to loosen that from the soil next we want to just pull them up it's pretty easy to do grab them by the base you don't have to cut the stalks off in this case and just gently rock them and pull them out now for me it's also important to save a few and put them in the ground so I'm gonna put a few in the ground and keep them here and hopefully they'll overwinter. If we get a ground freeze, I'll protect them with mulch or anything else. Something that will protect them from freezing in the ground. It doesn't happen very often, but if it does in your area, you need to make sure to bring them in in pots. But for me, I'm gonna leave a few in the ground and I'll start some in pots. Now, we just wanna clean up our ginger. We rinse it all off. There are roots and things that grow out of the ginger that you wanna pull off when you're uh, harvesting your ginger. These aren't the rhizomes, these are actual roots. Then snip them off at the base, keep the leaves and stems for later for other uses. To harvest the stems, you want to cut in sections along the stem here, and you want to make sure that you cut them in about four to six inch sections. But for us, we're just going to cut them where we can at the leaf nodes and easily pull the leaves off to strip them off of the actual stem itself. You can also pluck the leaves as well. So if you just pluck on them, they'll pop right off. This is really good if you want to use the leaves for tea, and if you're not going to use the t stems for cooking, mainly just for um, storing and making tea also. So that's something to keep in mind. There's different techniques to do it. Do it any way you like. Now, if you're going to use the stems for stir fry, the best way to do it is to grab the leaf right above the node where it grows out of the stem and pull it backwards along the stem. That will remove all of the extra fibrous material connected to that leaf and it'll make it much more tender. Now understand, the stems are not tender. They will not be tender, but this will make them more tender. Not quite as fibrous and woody. So continue to strip the leaves in that way if you're going to use them for stir fry or uh, even for the tea, that's fine. Whatever technique works for you works the best. Now once we have the stem all cleaned up, we can go ahead and cut it up into sections once again. Four to six inches, even 12 inches is fine at this stage depending on what you're going to use it for. Now, there's lots of ways to store the root. One of the ways to store the root is after cleaning it, you can freeze it. Now, freezing is really good. I like these vacuum seal bags because uh, they really keep things fresh. When you do it, anything you put in the freezer, make sure you date it and you label what it is. I know you think you'll know, but believe me, there's been plenty of times down the road I just didn't know. Anyway, I make sure the ginger root is really clean, and then I put it in the bag, and I vacuum seal it. Really, really simple. You want to leave a little extra space in your freezer bag if you have one of these sealed machines because you can cut it, use what you want, put it back in there and reseal it. It's just a way not to waste the bag. Now, another way to store it, which is one of my other favorite ways, is to store it fresh. Now, what you need is a small container of some sort with a lid, something that you can put on top. You're going to need your ginger root. What The stuff that I have here was harvested a few days before. And you want to remove any soft or bad pieces that are actually on the ginger because uh, you don't want this to cause rot inside. Now, what you're going to do 
is you're going to add clean play sand to the bottom of your container. About an inch is fine. Get it nice and level and even. Then we're going to take a piece of ginger and we're going to either break them apart or add them the whole pieces. It's up to you. But put them in the container so they're not touching each other. This is important. It, it adds to the rot process if you do that. They don't last quite as long. You're going to continue that, layer it in over the sand until you've filled up the whole area. Then you're going to put sand on top. You're going to cover it completely. All the ginger is completely covered until there's about an inch of sand above the ginger layer you just put in. Now you can repeat this over and over again, layering ginger and sand, ginger and sand until it's full. Once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to store it in about a 50 to 60 degree location, put the lid on it, leave it cracked. You want it to breathe. You don't want it to get moldy or really wet and damp in there. But cool spot out of the sunlight around 50, 60 degrees is ideal for it. Now, one of the other ways I love to make things is fresh ginger root tea. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to take two cups of water and a small uh, pan to boil in. We'll add the water to the pan and we'll get it heating up. We want to bring this to a roiling or rolling boil, depending on how you say it. So we're going to grab some fresh ginger here from our container. This is about a month or so later. Find a piece in the sand and pull it out. It doesn't matter what piece it is. As long as it's about four inches of ginger, you're good to go. We're going to go wash off the ginger so it's nice and clean. Once you have the ginger clean, it's time to chop it up and get it ready for the tea. Now, I recommend that you try to break the pieces apart a little bit because when you have ginger uh, that's been stored in sand, this was not cleaned great. Those little crevices in between, that's where dirt will start to show up. And you want to break it apart so you can get that in there and wash it again. It's just better. You don't want to be putting dirt in your mouth. Now, once it's clean, we're just going to uh, cut off any spots that we think are bad or maybe don't look so good. You don't have to peel it. You can peel it if you want. But but for me, I just like to cut off the pieces that are a little bit rough. Then we're going to finely chop this stuff up. It doesn't have to be done with culinary style or anything like that. Just roughly chop it. All we're doing is we want to make sure that we get as much surface area touching that water when we go to make our tea. It's also important to note that using the freshest ginger straight out of the ground, like if you harvest during the year, you can actually get the most healthful benefits out of that ginger and the tea. People that have been in the comments for the ginger video, which you can go see up there, it's down in the description, uh, they tell me that the fresh young ginger is what's used to make tea for the most medicinal properties available in the ginger. So, something to keep in mind. You can certainly use it like this, it will definitely be healthful, but if you can get it what they call young ginger, it's very, very much more healthful for you. Now that everything's chopped up, all we need is a sieve and we need our favorite coffee cup. Now we want to remove our boiling water from the heat, turn the heat off, and then we want to add our freshly chopped ginger. And then we're going to cover this. When you cover it, you want to make sure that you let it sit undisturbed for at least five to ten minutes. I prefer seven to ten minutes, but you do it as long as you like. You're going to get your coffee cup and you're going to get your sieve. And this is my favorite coffee cup, by the way. And if you haven't checked out this company, Vigo Garden, go check them out. They're amazing. We're just going to pour through the sieve straining out any of the ginger. Now you can reuse this ginger to make another tea if you want. It won't be as strong, so let it steep a little bit longer, but you can keep using it. You can also use it in other cooking. But this tea is, tastes good, it's very gingery. It's weird because it's warming in the winter and it's cooling in the summer. I didn't believe it until I tried it. Somebody in the comments told me that, thank you so much. But it is wonderful. Now, to prepare the leaves for storage, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and just cut them into about four inch sections. That's what I like. I use just standard kitchen scissors. Cut off any bad spots that you um, don't think you really want to preserve, that don't look very nice. It won't hurt you, but it's worth uh, removing it. And get everything cut and ready to go so you can either store it or you can use it for tea. And you can also use the stems the same way. Now, if you're gonna use the stems for tea, I suggest leaving them long, again, for Two to four inches is probably fine, or you can cut them into small little pieces. Small little pieces will get you a little bit more area, and it works really well. To make tea with the fresh leaves, again, you bring the water to a boil, it's just like the ginger tea. You remove it from the heat, throw your leaves and your stems into the water, and then we're gonna cover it and allow it to steep for five to 10 minutes. Now this is going to be a much less strong tasting tea. So if you want a more intense taste, boil it longer or let it steep longer. Then we're just gonna strain it off like we did before into a coffee cup and we're ready to go. Again, 
This is one of my favorite ways to make ginger tea. It's very subtle, the taste is excellent, and you can reuse the leaves again and again to put some in the fridge to store for later. Now, when you're preparing the leaves for dehydration and the stems as well, you wanna do about the same thing. You're really just cutting them up into smaller manageable pieces. I like to do about two inch pieces with the leaves and with the stems, I like to leave them longer, no more than four inches. And the reason being is because they fit very well into a mason jar. Now, there's a couple of methods you can do this. There's the dehydrator method, there's the oven method, and there's the hang dry method. All of them work in similar ways to this, but the idea is to put them on racks, let them dry out completely, and once they've dried, even when they're warm, let them cool off. You don't wanna put them in your storage container while they're still hot, there may be moisture in there. Now the stems have a little bit more liquid in them, so you wanna let them go a little longer. Usually I pull the leaves off a couple of hours before, sometimes a day before. They're not pliable anymore, they feel a little bit crisp, and that's when you know they're dry. Now to store them, I like to put them into mason jars. Once everything is cooled off, remember, you don't wanna put anything that is warm into a mason jar. Now these are sterile and clean mason jars as always. And by the way, the tea with this can be made in the exact same way as it's made with the fresh leaves and the fresh stems. Five to 10 minutes, boiling the water, pulling it off, letting it steep, and you're ready to go. You can store these in the cabinet or somewhere dark, keep it airtight, and it'll last a pretty good while. Use it regularly, just make sure that you don't get any moisture in there or anything funky in there. If you start to see something growing where it smells off, not like ginger, get rid of it. Now the stems, I like to store like this. Now these are really great to put in tea or add a little bit of flavor to a soup or something like that when they're dried. This is what I like about these, because they're longer, they're easy to pull out. So I kind of stack them in the jar so they're all facing the same way. Same process, you put the lid on it nice and tight, clean jar, dark space, nice and cool, and it'll keep for a very long time. So guys, I wanted to jump in real quick to tell you something I missed before. This is, by the way, editor doc in the future. Um, when we were storing these, uh, the leaves and the stems in these jars, there's something I forgot to mention, and that's that if you have any of the desiccants, the uh, moisture absorber packets, you should definitely put them in. I didn't have any when I did this, and so I kind of forgot to mention it, but I want to show you why. These leaves are perfectly fine. They're great. There's no problem. They were dried completely. But remember I said the stems had a problem? Well, here's one of the stem jars. You see what happens? They mold. This is useless. So because I didn't put a desk kit package in here, it uh, this is what it did. So you have to make sure you dry these things really well. The other jars I did of this did not come out this way, so it may have just been one or two things in there, enough to create some humidity. One of the other things you can do is just leave the tops off for a while to make sure they're totally dry. So anyway, I just wanted to jump in and remind you of that. Get some oxygen absorbers, the desiccants that go in to food grade stuff. You can pick them up on Amazon. You can get them in uh, big box stores. Anyway, I didn't have any, I forgot, and I wanted to make sure you knew so you didn't have this happen. All right, that's it. Back to the video. Now, if you want to save the stems and the leaves for stir fry, you want to cut them into much smaller pieces. Think green onions. Something like you were chopping green onions, cut them into very small pieces, and they're perfect. You can actually use them fresh, or you can freeze them also. Now, the stems. The part of the stem that's closest to the ginger is the most tender part, so it's actually not as fibrous. It still will be hard to chew, but it's actually really good. Cut them into very thin slices, again, like green onions. Now, same method, freezer works great. Keeps them really fresh. You can throw the stems in a bag, use the same vacuum seal method we used before. Make sure and label it with the date that you're freezing it uh, or you harvest it and what's in it. And the same with the leaves. You put the leaves in there and they really, honestly, they look like green onions, but they're great to pull out when you just need a little bit in a dish to add that ginger flavor, especially in soups and such. Now. They'll store really good this way for a very long time. They don't get freezer bite really, or freezer burn real easy, but make sure you do pull the stems out of soups and other dishes if you're worried about them being fibrous. After they've been frozen, they're not so bad. When they're green, they're still pretty fibrous, but I recommend pulling them out. All right, guys, that's it. The whole process just really involves using as much of this plant as you can. Freezing, drying, and fresh are the main ways to use it. And there's some tricks, like the sand method, to store ginger in a way that it stays as fresh as possible. You can also just put it in the refrigerator, the root that is. The leaves and things and the stems don't tend to do very well in the refrigerator, but you can try it. They'll last for a little while. Now, there are some other things you can make with it, stuff I didn't show in this video. Uh, candy ginger is a favorite. Powdered ginger is a favorite. Um, and if you wanna see videos on that, we can do that later, but I think most people know how to do that with the dehydration method. If they don't, let me know in the comments below and I'll certainly let you know. There is one other thing that I wanted to show in this video that takes a while, so I think I'm going to devote that to its own video, and that's ginger beer. And uh, it's not very alcoholic. 
In fact, it's got very little alcohol in it. You can do that however you like, but you can also do this without any alcohol at all, and it's really delicious. So, guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. It's a little bit different than my others, and uh, I don't know. We'll see how it comes out in editing, but I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. A lot of people have asked for it, and I was happy to finally make it. It took a lot to do it, and, um, and I, I have some ideas for next time that will make it a little bit easier on me, I think. But anyway, as always, I love hanging out with you guys. I want to hear from you down in the comments, and if you're not subscribed already and you like this video, give it a like. Hit the subscribe button, and you know what? Share this with somebody that loves ginger or doesn't know something. I hear from a lot of you that you didn't know you could use the leaves and stems. This is a great video to share with them. And when you do, it really helps out the channel. So guys, I want to leave you like I always leave you. There's only four things you need to live a happy and well-balanced life. Number one, you need to have something to believe in. Number two, you need to have someone to love. Number three, you need to have something to do. And number four, you need to have something to look forward to. I look forward to hanging out with you guys. And if you want to learn more about what you can do with ginger or or other things in your garden, you should definitely check out this video right here. I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. All right. I love you. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Doc out.